In this iPhotography tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a three-dimensional photograph using these two images. It's really cool. So join with me and let's get started. So the key to getting three-dimensional photographs right when you're editing them is choosing the right image. Well, choosing both the right images, really, because we need to have a, an image that has a boundary to it. So this is why I've got this image of this kind of old Polaroid uh, slide here. So I've just made, I've just added this kind of big purple border to it, uh, which we can change a little bit later, really, but it's just to help us give us a space uh, to begin with. The other image that I've chosen of our model here has her hands kind of reaching out because because obviously with the three-dimensional aspect we need something to kind of cross over that that kind of fourth wall perspective over the barrier so that's what's hopefully going to go over the edge of our Polaroid here so to begin with all we need to do is to actually get one on top of the other so it's best to get your um, subject on top of your Polaroid or whatever frame type you're using then it's really a case of getting the perspective and the positionings right so once we've kind of copied it across or dragged it over we can just reduce the opacity then of that layer just so we can now see the elements and really where the hands are going to cross over so you can see some of that jutting out a little bit um, you don't want to have it so much that the, you know the whole body of the subject is actually popping out because then it starts to lose the effect you just want a little bit of subtleness so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just so we keep some of the colors from her outfit in there because I think they're pretty cool and I'll just make it a little bit wider again just so we get a tiny touch of the arm coming across the other side there. But I think that's that's probably about enough there. Okay, so let's get rid of that other image. And we've got a photograph here. Now, all it is as simple as doing is using a layer mask. And we're going to start to erase the parts that we don't want that's outside the boundary. And obviously just keeping bits in that we do. So to start off with a layer mask, we just use the layer mask icon from the very bottom of the layers panel here. Then we go over to our color panels, our color swatches, make sure the top, the foreground is black and we've got our paintbrush selected. You can kind of raise up the opacity if you wanted to again, but I find it's actually a little bit more useful to have it down to begin with. Um, just whilst we're doing this erasing, just so we can see where we want the effect to start and stop. Okay, so now this may take a little bit of time. Again, depends upon how quick your computer is, how high resolution your image is, uh, and how precise you want to be if you're just doing this for the first time. But it really now is a case of just going along and brushing and masking out a lot of that background of that image model, uh, of, the, of the image of our model. Uh, we're taking out the background of that photograph just to make sure we start to create the effect nice and clearly. Now don't worry if you ever make a mistake, you can always switch your color of your brushes back to white and you can paint areas back in. So I'm just going to whip around now all the edges and just simply still using the, the, the layer mask and not using anything else but that. Now if you want to use things like the magic wand tool, if your photograph has got a very, very different background from your subject. So in this instance, if our, if our model was photographed on a yellow background, for example, it'd probably be a lot easier to use things like the magic wand tool or the subject selection tool, um, and then being able to just delete that background from there. But because our subject is dressed in black and our background is black, and parts of the gloves that she's wearing here are black as well, it's gonna make it actually kind of quite tricky to do that. It, Photoshop may not pick up the the precise differences of all the different shades of black. So this is why I thought it's a little bit easier and sometimes you're a lot more precise. If you ever get the instance where you've got a large area and um, that you just want to mask out and it's actually got a straight line on it as it is here, you can use the marquee tool and just make a fairly decent size selection there. Just go back then to your you know, brush and then it'll just erase or you can mask out everything that's within that boundary. It's just a quick way of doing it really because Working with straight edges and then a circular brush can be a little bit tricky sometimes that you may accidentally erase into areas that you don't want. So this is just a quick way of making your brush a little bit larger, making big selections, knowing that you're not interrupting any portion of the image that you actually want to keep. I zoom out, you can kind of start to see the effect a little bit more clearly. We're just going to get rid of this background here. We can use a bigger brush, we can make it harder. 
and we're going to make some big single clicks. Just mask out all those areas there. So now comes the moment of truth. Let's get that little bit down there. Let's restore the opacity and bring it right up. There we go. Brilliant. It's looking awesome already. But by increasing the opacity of the layer, you can go back and you'll actually be able to see any parts of the uh, background that you haven't actually erased or masked out from the, uh, the top layer here. But this is looking really cool. I may, I think, just really kind of for purposes of myself, I may want to change the color of the background a little bit as well. So I quite like the colors that are on our subject here. So make sure we actually select the subject um, as opposed to the layer mask in this instance. I may actually also select the red. So in wanting to select two colors like that, so just using the eyedropper tool, which is on the vertical toolbar, press that there, you press on one color, it selects it as a foreground, then simply just switch it around, and then you can select another color, which is now the new foreground, but you basically you've got two colors there that are taken from the image. Um, I'm gonna to return to the background layer here, so this purple that we've got on our Polaroid slide, what I'm actually going to do, is just if we zoom out a little bit further, um, because it's just a background layer, we just hide our top layer for a minute so we can see what we're doing. Um, we're going to select all that kind of purpley color. We've got a nice selection area there. Still using the colors that we had from our subject. We're going to press the gradient tool and go up here into the drop down, go to basics, and it's going to give us a gradient that's based on those two colors. I'm going to drag it down from top to bottom. It may seem a little bit heavy, I think I may go the other way around. So you can just press X, switch the colors around, and that would automatically do it on the gradient. Do it again. You may just draw that line one more time, get it fairly more even, and there we go. And I've just restored our model layer. So all I was trying to do is basically kind of get the effect. So the colors that I've used, oh, the colors that she was actually wearing in her outfit are replicated on the background there. That is a simple principle of creating a really cool 3D image. You can do it with any photograph. It really has come with some limbs that are stretching out, some areas that you think you can cut around and extend over the canvas. You can find stock images like these Polaroids anywhere you like on the internet. You can even create your own by just photographing a frame and that then gives you a border to actually extend your subject over the top. But I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial about creating 3D images. Keep looking out for iPhotography for more. Thanks for watching.